As much as 40,000 metric tons of oil and grease enter Puget Sound every year. That's as much as a battleship weighs. You might think all that pollution comes from the usual suspects, cargo ships or factories, but actually it's caused by rain. Even a light shower can create thousands of gallons of storm water that washes over Seattle's non-absorbent streets, sidewalks, and parking lots, sweeping up an array of pollutants and turning into a river of oil, metals, pesticides, and other contaminants. It's estimated that 75% of the toxic chemicals in Puget Sound are carried there by runoff. Many people in the Puget Sound region think that Puget Sound is in pretty good shape. We have actually some of the worst um, uh, stormwater and other pollution problems in the United States in Puget Sound. Residents across the Northwest are taking on the problem by capturing the runoff while it's still a trickle, by disconnecting their downspouts and sending the water to something called a rain garden. A rain garden is a, a beautiful landscape feature you can put in your yard at home to collect rainwater runoff from your rooftop, uh, your downspouts, driveway, um, any hard surface and the plants and soil in the rain garden will filter out any pollutants found in that runoff and slow it and divert it before it goes into storm drains. Rain gardens are shaped like a bowl and filled with layers of spongy soils and plants that can withstand extreme wet and dry conditions. These gardens are built to mimic a forest and replicate the work of the thousands of acres of woodlands and wetlands that have been lost to urban development. Washington State University, along with the nonprofit group Stewardship Partners, are working with communities across Puget Sound to build 12,000 rain gardens in the next five years. 12,000 rain gardens will absorb approximately 160 million gallons of stormwater each year. The campaign is identifying waterways where stormwater pollution is at a critical level. Longfellow Creek, which runs through the North Del Ridge neighborhood of West Seattle, is one such location. This stream is so polluted by runoff that 88% of coho salmon that come here die before they can spawn. I think we're going to get started, so... Uh, David Email taught the residents of North Delridge how to design and build effective rain gardens. We're here today to plant and mulch and finish off 10 rain gardens for this neighborhood. And why is this area important? is because the stormwater coming off the streets generate uh, pollutants that go into uh, Longfellow Creek. This cluster of gardens was funded by a National Fish and Wildlife grant with the hope that once these 10 rain gardens are built, they will inspire other homeowners to build their own. We found it uh, ap very important to recruit this homeowner advocate, or we call them the champion, who we educate uh, about the benefits and the need to do rain gardens, and we ask them to go find other neighbors. We cut holes in the burlap. Carrie Kohlhaas has become the rain garden champion of North Delridge. I don't think it would have worked if someone had just, you know, shown up and said, we're putting rain gardens in on your block. It just, people resist that kind of thing. But Carrie quickly sold everyone in her neighborhood on the idea. Everyone, that is, except her fiance. And I said, you know, that this one neighbor really doesn't want a rain garden, and and, you know, he just really likes his lawn. And Todd said, that's how I feel. My initial reaction was it meant more work for me uh, because I just finished building a raised bed. Uh, so I wasn't that excited about it. There are many misconceptions about rain gardens. People wonder if they'll cause flooding or if they'll become mosquito breeding grounds or if they'll be fussy to maintain. But according to the rain garden experts, these are all myths. Probably the biggest myth is that you can't use these uh, systems or bioretention areas, rain gardens, on poor soils, soils that don't drain well. And actually, you know, we've applied and installed, you know, designed and installed bioretention systems on poor soils, and they work pretty well, very well, actually. Curtis Hinman is the director of Washington State University's Low Impact Development Research Program a one-of-a-kind in the nation facility for testing sustainable stormwater methods like rain gardens and porous pavement. Right now we're focusing on um, water quality treatment uh, through bioretention systems or rain gardens. Some have questioned the effectiveness of these methods, especially after problems arose with some rain gardens in Ballard last year. But Hinman says that was a combination of poor soil, groundwater being too close to the surface, 
and mistakes that were made during construction. Ballard rain gardens, I think, are a very good example of how important it is to do really careful analysis, particularly in, in, in challenging settings. Hinman has written the handbook on installing rain gardens in the Northwest, and his research is being used throughout the region as new stormwater management rules are being drafted. In the past, we've We've provided a, a, you know, a drain and a way for water to get off the property, and as long as water went down that drain, that's probably all people cared about. Now we're building stormwater management facilities in their yards, in their, in their streets, and so there's much more interaction with the public in managing stormwater. But for neighborhoods that are already established, it's a matter of choice to adopt new methods like rain gardens. So financial incentives are being offered to homeowners who build rain gardens in the form of grants, like the one for Carrie Kohlhaas's neighborhood. It's like anything that's unfamiliar. You learn a little more about it, and you get a little more acquainted with it. You talk to other people about it, and you, it sort of starts to normalize as an idea. And now we've all become sort of rain, well, I don't know about everyone, but a lot of us have become rain garden evangelists. And even her biggest skeptic has come around. I would highly recommend this to other neighborhoods. Uh, in fact, I would love to see Seattle be known throughout the country for these, this rain garden program. 